Hello, everyone. This is Burl Schwartz from City Pulse. And uh, as you may know, we try to sit down with the mayor of Lansing every month. Today, we are doing that uh, in a different place. Uh, normally, we are at Message Makers in Old Town, but uh, today, thanks to Message Makers, uh, we are able to talk to the mayor uh, via Zoom. Uh, for what I think is uh, going to be an important interview. Andy Shore, thank you very much for taking time out of your schedule to talk to us. My pleasure, Burrell. Happy to, happy to be able to share information with your viewers in this tough very time. Very good. Now, are we find, I presume we're finding you in your office at City Hall? We are, actually. This is only my second time back since we declared the state of emergency. I'm trying to do things remotely, and um, you know, we're, we're closed, all of our buildings, but I thought it made sense to come back and do it here as the technology is better here. Uh, is it a challenge for you as uh, the leader of our city to uh, keep six feet apart and uh, uh, other safety measures? Uh, it's not a challenge to keep six feet apart. It's a challenge to keep the phone up my ear. Um, you know, I think I've had the phone in my ear, you know, almost every minute um, for the last few days, just, you know, navigating things and working with folks. So. Um, you know, I'm, I'm still very connected. I've learned Zoom. I had never used Zoom before, and then now I'm learning Zoom. And you know, our the city is using Microsoft uh, and Skype and other tools. So I'm learning a lot about uh, online meetings and things, uh, and utilizing these uh, both within the city and and with other you know partners. And I want to talk to you about that sort of thing first. I want to ask you. Is there anything new right now that uh, you can tell our uh, watchers? Yeah, there's something new every few minutes. So at new from when is really the question. You know, there's, there's just, there's something new all the time. And, you know, we continue to monitor everything. You know, our, we, as you know, the city, uh, we declared an emergency and we have shut down our buildings and we have people at home doing work from home. We have, you know, essential workers on. So you're still going to have your, your, uh, police and fire, you know, when you flush the toilet, it's still going to go somewhere. When you turn on the sink, the water is still going to come out. Um, but, uh, but we are uh, non-essential employees are in essence working from home to the best of their ability. And uh, you know, we're, we're doing the best to make sure that we can serve the public, but also have everybody socially separated out of the, out of the buildings. You know, we, we really, we believe in this flatten the curve um, attitude that, that the governor has been talking about and getting people um, away from each other to make sure it doesn't spread. Uh, what are essential services? What, what is operating? But we've got each department director who's working through what essential services are. So we know, you know, you know, police, you know, fire department, again, wastewater treatment, things like that. So our, uh, our operations and maintenance, our O&M division, uh, Director Kilpatrick is designating who is essential services and who isn't. Um, it, you know, trash pickup, we have to make sure the trash gets picked up, uh, recycling and things. So um, a lot of the services, especially with folks who are, um, who are not in buildings or, or um, uh, meeting with anyone publicly. Uh, so if you are, you know, an outside employee and you're away from people uh, and you're an essential service, then then you're working. Um, so, but each department director has been able to determine that within their department. You know, we've got uh, one or two workers in treasury that have to be there as uh, taxes are paid and things like that. They've got to be there to process. And I think they they rotate, so they're not all there, but I think they they rotate for who who grabs the the taxes to make sure that they're paid. You know, our finance, you need to have someone here to cut checks as needed to make sure um, payroll and other things are done. So I think they rotate one person. Uh, but again, our finance director is designating who's essential. Our treasurer is designating who's essential. Our public service director designates our economic development and planning. Uh, all the ones who have employees that work directly with other staff or forward facing designate who that essential service is. And then our internal, um, you know, you still have to process uh, in a, internal HR stuff. So um, our HR director will des designate. Um, we have assessing and all, all of our divisions have the directors is, uh, determining what's essential and what's not essential. And we, we did that on purpose. You don't, you know, I can't just say, boom, this person's essential or not. We want the directors to be able to do that um, based on, on kind of the, the work that needs to get done uh, here in an office or, uh, or out on the street or that can get done at home. Uh, how are you dealing with, uh, uh, how are you communicating with people like, say, the county health officer? How does that work? Uh, by phone. Um, we've, we've spoken, we actually just got off the phone with her, you know, not too long ago. 
We have meetings that are going on uh, daily between the emergency operations team. I think they had one this morning. Um, and I talk to her whenever there are, are situations and things. Uh, when the first case, um, when the first person, uh, it feels like months ago, but it may, may have been last week, when the first person was being uh, looked at, we were in a press conference. Uh, and then when we had our first positive, um, she gave me a call and let me know uh, as we have, uh, as we find out that people are being uh, sequestered or quarantined because they're getting tested and things. We try and um, everybody tries to, to keep in the loop with each other. Pretty yeah. often. How does that work going up the ladder with the state and uh, the feds? Uh, well, we, we have an emergency management team that deals with most of that. Um, I am in contact daily with Congresswoman Slotkin. Um, she's been fantastic. She's done a variety of calls with elected officials. Um, we text back and forth. We call each other, uh, you know, as resources are needed. She has been working with, uh, with the Speaker of the House in negotiations with the Treasury Secretary to release funds from the feds. So um, our Congresswoman has been uh, very directly and very hands-on involved in a lot of this stuff to make sure that we can get the resources we need. You know, she called me and said, you know, the Small Business Administration has resources available. So small businesses should start getting ready uh, and getting their paperwork ready. And she, you know, she's told people that publicly and, and we're telling people that uh, we may be putting out something pretty soon with small business resources. You know, we're in contact with her on, on what resources and things for, for homelessness and others. Uh, and at the same time, you know, I'm in direct contact with the governor's office. So as she releases executive orders and, and other things, and they just did something for childcare for healthcare workers and first responders. Um, I've got them sending me that information daily and I'm on their daily list and I pass it through to my, my directors and to our emergency management staff. Um, Nick Tate, who's our chief administrative officer in my office, is kind of the lead um, for, for my office. And uh, uh, William Engleter is our emergency management director. So he is dealing with, uh, with the county, with um, the uh, county health department, county emergency operations and others regionally. So it's all kind of flowing through processes and we're in uh, constant contact. Uh, the grocery stores are uh, staying open. We sent a couple of reporters out yesterday and they don't see people staying six feet apart. Uh, now I went to Whole Foods in East Lansing uh, where they have set up the register in a way so you are three or four feet away from uh, the person checking you out. But uh, is there any role for uh, the city, the police, others to try to um, enforce the six foot distance in private businesses? Yeah, you know, somewhat. Um, you know, our, our police do enforce the laws. Um, at, so when the governor, you know, initiates that, you know, no more, you know, the meetings are only, uh, now it's 50 or under, um, that, that bars and restaurants, shouldn't be open except for takeout. Um, our police can enforce that. You know, we're not we're not looking to, to put people in jail. Um, we're just looking to make sure that that it, that everyone is staying safe. So um, there is there is somewhat of a role. Our police, in addition to uh, state police and the county sheriff and others, all law enforcement will enforce the the orders that have been set. And you know, they're doing what they can do. I know uh, when the governor first announced, I think it was no more than a hundred or more. Um, you know, our our uh, city police did send out noticed along with with uh, DLI and others to all of the bars when they were still open that hey St. Patrick's Day is coming up please remember you can't have more than this number and we should be doing social separations so we did kind of get with them just to, to give them that information in advance and then things changed very rapidly um, so we are you know alerting business owners and talking to them and they've been very uh, very good to to comply I believe um, so our, our police have have taken proactive action and, and worked with uh, business owners and others to try and and comply with the governor's executive orders. You know, some of it is executive order and some of it is recommendation, um, but we're trying to get folks to comply. And I think with all of the, the reporting and media and understanding of the problem, you know, folks are complying. You know, we saw that, that one picture, whenever it was, of the rib and all the students outside. And I think when that hit nationally, you know, a lot of even the, the bar and restaurant owners understood the issues and, and that quickly went away and the students are understanding. And um, so I think a lot of that, is happening organically, but but there is a role for our our, uh, our police to help to enforce uh, and to you know to, um, to try and let folks know what what they're doing is right or not. Well, of course, judging from the uh, 
beer pong parties and the front lawns of fraternities. I'm not sure they totally get it yet. Yeah. Well, but, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it, in your conversations uh, with uh, uh, the county health officer, with the governor's office, is there consideration uh, on any level of uh, asking people, to, uh, telling people you have to stay home? Uh, I have not heard of specific orders. You know, I, I read the, the media and I know New York City is looking at that. And I think San Francisco, the what is it, the sequestration in place? Um, I, I haven't heard that yet, um, but again, things change day to day. That would be an order from the governor. Um, I'm not sure that our, our county health department would have the ability to do something like that. Um, so I think that the governor, uh, and she has been issuing many executive orders that, that I am fully supportive of, and I think uh, most people think she's doing a good job trying to, to manage the crisis. Um, but if that, if that came from her, I haven't heard that coming yet, but um, it's all happening really fast. You know, we, had, we didn't hear that the schools were gonna close and then they closed. We didn't know if bars and restaurants were closed and then they did. Um, so I think it's all coming really fast. I, I wouldn't take anything off the table right now, but um, but I haven't heard anything specific about that being ordered yet. Uh, we are uh, seeing in San Francisco, of course, that uh, people have been ordered to stay home. Uh, do, does the do you as mayor have the authority to do that? Uh, I don't. I don't think I do. Um, we have we have set a city emergency. I haven't asked that question to my legal. So I can, but I don't. I don't think I do. I think that um, most of that comes through either the state through the governor's emergency powers act or uh, the county health department through the the public health code has pretty extensive um, powers. Now, a lot of their powers are are due to imminent threat and danger. So it's how they determine imminent threat and danger. Um, so I think most of that goes through the county and the state. Um, certainly, I, you know, I can look into that and see if we have the power to order that, but I, I don't think I do, but I have, not, uh, I have not talked to my legal counsel, so don't, don't hold me to that because I'm not a lawyer. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, the, uh, uh, we're seeing a sharp drop off in people downtown. Yeah. Uh, the city at the same time has just hit up its rainy day fund uh because of a number of issues that have arisen um, how how bad does this look for uh, the city's economy i uh, don't know yet i uh, don't know yet um and and we're clearly tracking that you know the ironic part is uh, you know we have to present our budget uh to council on monday and we're presenting a budget basically of of what we've been preparing for the last few uh, weeks and months you know, we'll, we'll expect that there'll be budget amendments as we navigate uh, what the economy looks like. You know, we did reduce our, our, uh, our fund balance, but we actually expect to be re-increasing that if we, can, um, if we can get, you know, find some fees from the feds waived and if we can um, uh, readjust where the lawsuit dollars went um, into uh, the sewer fund instead of the general fund. So we think that we will, a lot of it is accounting and not actually taking from the rainy day fund. So we think the accounting will, will change some of that. But that being said, you're right. You know, what's the effects of this on the economy? I don't know yet. You know, when the when the UAW strike happened, they were effect uh, then, and we can look at some of those numbers uh, and see how that affected the board of water and light and affected city government because of income tax. Um, and now that the plants are closed, you know, how are they how are they being paid? Um, it seems that everybody, for the most part, well, not everybody, uh, state workers and city workers are still being paid, but you do have layoffs from restaurant uh, workers and others. So, you know, how will that affect, uh, will there be unemployment and things like that? Although the governor did extend unemployment from 20 to 26 weeks. Um, so we're gonna have to navigate that. We're gonna have to see as income tax revenues change, um, how that affects our budget. You know, property tax revenues for the most part stay the same, and that's a good chunk of our budget. Uh, fines and fees have, have pretty much been delayed for uh, three or four weeks. So that could have a, a small impact, but I think that'll be minimal. Um, but the income tax is the real question. You know, are people out of work? Are they, uh, are they not filing the same income tax? Is there a reduction there? Um, so we'll look at all of that you know, when it ends, right? I don't know, I don't know when, the, when the end happens and when, um, when we go back to normalcy and when we flatten the curve enough to, for things to go back to normal. Um, we look at our budget quarterly, so we'll present the budget. If there are any changes from now until May, 
that can be made. We'll make those changes and then we'll continue to evaluate the budget as we go and see, you know, my hope is that this is a, you know, a short term, uh, I don't know if it's, if they're calling it a recession or what they're calling it, it, you know, there will be economic impact, but does it go back to normal? Does it not? We will navigate that as we go. Uh, City Pulse is getting um, sketchy information from the hospitals. Uh, some media are getting more, but uh, I'm not seeing a ton of information uh, uh, about how prepared the hospitals are, what steps they are taking. Are you in touch with the hospitals and what can you tell us? Now, our emergency management team, uh, again, our emergency management works with the county uh, health department and county emergency management. And the hospitals are part of that group, so they are talking very frequently. Um, I, you know, I, I have conversations with my emergency management folks um, when I, you know, often when I can, but I'm not on the daily calls. Um, it seems like they, you know, they are seeing, from my perspective, they are seeing increases. Um, you know, they're they're trying to get testing uh, available for COVID-19, and there are also uh, the availability of, of private companies to do testing. So they're, it's not just the hospitals being flooded. Um, you know, there are people that are going there and they, they're trying to get people to at least call ahead before they go to their doctor or the health system and say, these are the conditions I have. That way they can tell them, you know, yes, come in, be tested. Or if they shouldn't come in and be tested because it's a common cold and not a, a virus symptom. Um, I think that they're, they're seeing increases, but, um, but I, you know, I, that's about what I know offhand, you know, just enough to be dangerous right now. But they are in constant contact with our emergency management folks. They were at the press conference that we did um, whenever we did it with the health department, both the hospital systems had people there. Um, so they are, they're certainly uh, connecting with, with us. You know, we know uh, there, are, there are things like homeless shelters and others that as people present, you know, some of those folks are being brought over the hospitals and, and we're navigating that. How do, you, how do you have separation there and have enough space and yet not put people out on the streets? So we're working with, uh, with the homeless shelters and others um, so all of that is is um, is in progress, but we're having all good conversations. Kim Coleman from our uh, HRCS Human Relations Community Service, she's our new director. Um, she has been in constant contact uh, with with the shelters, with the food bank. Um, we're still doing our mobile food pantry, but it's going to be cars driving up and getting food uh, in boxes given to them, so you can maintain separation. So we're um, we are in contact with all the different pieces of the social safety net. Do you know if Sparrow is looking at uh, reopening St. Lawrence? Uh, I haven't heard that. Uh, I have not heard that specifically. Um, you know, I, I have had conversations with, with Kim Coleman on my staff that she should speak with them about what, what facilities they have and, and how they can be utilized. And I plan to talk to Sparrow as well about that. You know, I think in, your, in the City Pulse, you mentioned the idea of, of Old Eastern being you know, reopened and used and, and St. Lawrence. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, and I do plan to have that conversation with uh, with some Sparrow leadership. Um, I think we're we're supposed to be on the phone soon. Uh, and I won't keep you much longer. Is the uh, as far as testing goes, uh, are you involved in where testing would take place? Would there be multiple locations? Uh, again, we're involved just as as part of the the committee and the conversation. A lot of that flows through the health department. Um, so we are supportive of the health department and we uh, are happy to work with them to provide options. We have not, I have not had that specific conversation with, with Linda Vale, but I know she is having that conversation, who's our health officer uh, for the county. I know she's having that conversation with the health systems, with the doctors, and with, with other entities. Uh, the city has announced that the parks are closed. Uh, we didn't. No, we didn't. Uh, okay. I, uh, according to Larry Cosentino, who's working on this, he asked me to ask. He said uh, the city has said the parks are closed. Is no, our parks are our, our parks are are always open. You know, if you go to the neighborhood park, we're not putting a gate up over the neighborhood park. Um, in fact, I you know I, I drove by uh, off Aurelius by the River Trail, and, and the the parking lot was packed. Um, our parks are not closed. There, you know, the gates are closed. Uh, at certain parks, at, at two or three parks where you have gates, Francis and, and uh, one or two others, but they're, they're closed for the winter uh, and they open seasonally. But people can still get into our parks. You know, um, we, I believe we are still doing trash pickup and things like that. Uh, again, we're navigating who's essential and who's not, but if people are using the parks, then it's a, a, a public safety or it's a sanitation, public health issue. 
Um, but our, we've got 111 parks in the city of Lansing and you know, 90% of them are neighborhood parks that you can walk to within 10 minutes of your house. So the parks are, are open. The county parks, I believe, are closed. So I think Hawk Island and, and Lake Lansing, I think, don't hold me to that, you have to ask the county. I think, I think they are closed is what I was told. But city parks, it's not like we're going and putting gates up you know, at, uh, at Wentworth Park or anywhere else where the parks are, are available to be used. Again, with, uh, we'd like to see separation in things. If you're gonna use the river trail or anything like that, you still want separation, but we have not barricaded our 111 parks. Uh, the city has suspended the ban on overnight parking? Correct. Um, uh, is the city ticketing for daytime parking? Uh, I don't believe we are. And uh, before I let you go, anything else you'd like to say to our audience? You know, I, it's the city of Lansing has been, we've been very proactive. We were, we were pre as prepared as we could be. You know, I, I think uh, I've been in conversation with lots of mayors from uh, all over the country and from the state. You know, I've talked to the mayor of Grand Rapids, the mayor of Jackson just in the last two days. Uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're doing the best we can to keep the public safe and to keep our visitors and anybody here safe. Uh, and still have city services while keeping our employees safe as well. Um, so we are we are navigating this. This is a, a tough and challenging time. You know the schools are out, and uh, we know kids are home, and and uh, we know people have lots of different um, issues they're dealing with, and we're doing our best to to cover those issues in uh, in conjunction with the, with the county and our neighboring communities. You know this doesn't stop at at Waverly, and it doesn't stop at our borders. This is something that all of our communities are going through. It's very different than the flood. You know, two years ago we had a flood, and we had you know several locations within the city that got flooded. Um, this isn't just you know one flooded area. This is our city, every other city, every township, you know, the whole county, the whole state, and the whole country and world. Um, we're all navigating it together. So we're we're doing the best we can do. Um, uh, our offices are while the the buildings are closed. Our phone numbers uh, are up online at uh, lansingmi.gov/coronavirus. Uh, that's how you can get a hold of any department and we're trying to get all of those numbers to ring through to people but some of them are not so if you leave a message someone will get back to you you can still email uh, different departments and you'll get answers you can email my office uh, and we'll try and get you the right answer so government continues to operate and and support uh, those that need support in the city of lansing we're just uh, physically separated and socially separated but we'll continue to operate and navigate it and do the best we can do while this is this crisis is going on well, good luck to you. Thank you so much for your time today. I hope we can do this a little more frequently during this uh, difficult uh, period. And I want to thank uh, message makers for making this possible. Uh, we'll uh, we'll keep our uh, keep our, keep you in mind as you uh, lead us through this. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Thanks, everyone.